Well, welcome back everyone for today's Destiny 2 build session, where today's topic we'll be looking at a less than serious build that can be adopted by any other classes at will, but not ever be taken seriously. Today's build will be experimenting on the idea of having not only one, not only two, but three grenade launchers at once, a setup that is not only odd but also very bizarre to even try and use for 90% of the content in game. The idea of using three grenade launchers at once isn't much of a new idea as this has been around for a very long time. In the past, this playstyle was most common in Crucible when Malinotop was introduced, and against a very skilled player who knew how to time their shots, you would never be safe if you stopped. Once Mountain Top was slowly phased out, so did the triple grenade launcher setup, and soon after that, grenade launchers became another top contender in PvE for its pure damage against enemies. As of now, grenade launchers are highly looked at as one of the best secondaries to use in PvE endgame for damage or crowd control options, and as Season Splicer has mods heavily dedicated to this one area, I thought why not bring this triple grenade launcher setup back just to see how good it is now. As you'll soon see, the build covers many key areas that brings up the strength of the build, however it also leaves many areas vulnerable and can at times leave you helpless in countering back. Not to worry though, I've got the counters in place, so if you're happy to you try something wacky and fun out for once, then stick on by and I'll show you the ropes. Before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then do leave a like and sub, for more content like this in the near future, I would really appreciate it. Starting with the subclass, we'll be using Revenant for the stat boost from Stasis and also the passive playstyle that Stasis will have when using my grenade launcher. One of the advantages to using a loadout where all weapons are the same in function is that you're not tied down to needing to use just one subclass whatsoever. If you wish, you can use Void, Arc or Solo instead and no matter what, they won't take away from the core design of the build as everything is being carried by the grenade launchers and mods that follow. This bit of adaptability is useful if you simply want to farm bounties, but not in a boring way, or if you need to switch into other subclasses to fit a design role. My reasoning to using stasis is that stasis in general allows users to play it how they want, with multiple roles tied into the crafting of the fragments. My setup is simple, I aim to play as a crowd control player who will be able to support my team on demand, but also have great options of controlling the field to my pleasure. For this, I need to use the dust field grenade for a vacuum effect or gathering multiple enemies at once. This pair with touch winter aspect that allows us to change up a few things of how the grenade works, allows my grenade launcher to be more accurate, lethal and better controlled when so many enemies are in one field. With this, I then added in the whispers of fissures for increased stasis crystal destruction, whispers of shards for a boost in grenade energy on stasis crystal destruction and Whisper of Rending for increased kinetic weapon damage against frozen targets. This overall allows us to maximise our grenade launchers to the fullest without needing to play within a certain playstyle. Freezing targets should be a priority within the build, but so is using our grenade launcher and war myself mods that will be coming into action at a later date. I wouldn't say what I have is the perfect matchup for the grenade launcher build in general, as we can customise and get even more better results if we sit down and think for a second. For example, instead of Shadow Dive, Whispers of Shards and Rending, we could have used Grim Harvest, Whisper of Conduction and Whispers of Rhyme instead which will allow the user to have a constant overshield available and allow me to soak up more damage when in AoE range. Or we could be really basic and go for Bonds and Refraction for an ability and super energy regen. Whatever you choose, it won't take away from the core of the build as the build is more or less complete once you have the grenade launcher sorted. From there you just add your own style and do as you please. Our weaponry section will be a doozy as any grenade launcher of your choosing can work. What you must take into consideration though is that the shared ammo pool you have and how you need to stay not only consistent with your shots but also well reserved in how you use your grenades. A prime example of this is with my primary and secondary weapon in use. My primary is using the ignition curl with blinding grenades, field prep and one for all for a bit of extra damage on the side. As we do have a technical downside of the build, it being lack of ways to counter close range targets, I have opted into utilising one of the most strongest perks made available for most breach loaders available. Blinding grenades by default are ok for damage, but brilliant for crowd control options, which is needed if you want to survive many fights. My plan was to use it once things start to get hectic and then use the downtime to reload my weapons, prep my abilities or even bypass certain enemies that are now stunned. 
As you'll soon see, this is highly recommended when you try to use this in something like legend or master content as you won't have the tools to counter many enemies, such as the champions. But you can slow down the minor, major and ultras, just enough for you to focus your energy on a single target. Of course, if you don't plan on needing blinding grenades to support, then using Wither Horde is a great alternative for damage over time and clearing large groups of enemies in an instant. When my primary comes to secondary, I am using the famed fighting lion in all of his glory. I have found that fighting lion is a very exceptional weapon to use if you ever get yourself into trying out grenade launchers for the first time. What makes this grenade launcher outright unique is his perk Fin the Hurt, which offers you increased damage against shielded enemies, rapid kills will refill your magazine, and most importantly, kills always drop you primary ammo. As I mentioned earlier, the one issue with using double grenade launchers is the ammo pool they have to pull from, all being shared, which for PvE can be an issue at times, but depending on activities, can be slightly avoided. In PvP, on the other hand, if you don't aim your shots, then you'll lose out on a bunch of fights there and then. But with Fighting Lion, you don't have to worry about that as you're always producing ammo for the weapon, so while you run out of ammo for primary easily, your secondary will never run out. On top of that, it can also work with Warmind Decree mod for producing new Warmind cells, something I plan to heavily incorporate into the build for damage and survival. For Heavy, I'm using the Berenger's Memory with Spike Grenades, Clown Cartridge and Autoloading Holster, and I plan to use this weapon as a DPS dump against bosses when the time comes. As I have the Breach and Clear mod available, I can pull off around 20-30k damage alone with the weapon, and keep a consistent rotation of damage thanks to the autoloading holster and my other grenade launchers in hand. I would recommend you try and get a role similar to mine as the damage is noticeable for endgame bosses but also autoloading the holster on any grenade launchers are a general must have. For stats, our main focus is for survival and that's pretty much it. Unlike other builds where stats are the main key for survival and synergy between mods, the build doesn't rely so heavily on strength, intellect and discipline just to make it function to a high degree. As we use stasis to help us out passively through engagements, the freedom of stat choices will allow you to pick and choose how you want the build to play out to your own liking. A build such as this doesn't need a lot of support and discipline on strength since all of our main strength lies in the weapons and mods, but we can still push to them to an adequate level that we can all agree on. Naturally, aiming for 50-60 for all three key areas is best choice to aim for because of how strong stasis is, whether you play aggressive or defensive. The stats will mostly be supported by the aspects and artifacts, which will enhance the stats the most compared to the mods. The mods on the other hand will play into the offensive and defensive side of the build. With the Warmind Decree mod, I can create Warmind cells from void explosions which Fighting Lion will be attending to. With that, I then added in the power of Rasputin mod for an increase in damage against those near my Warmind cells, which is handy against champions or bosses. We have Hammer of the Warmind mods that will stagger both Overload and Unstoppable Champions upon destruction, allowing the build to have a place in most endgame content, Burning Cells for that extra burn damage upon destruction, and Global Reach for an increased range of cells. These will all act as an extra support for the stat section when combined into the status effects, as we can proc them multiple times after a simple freeze that will provide extra benefits in the long run. To simply put it, stats for this build isn't as important as it should be because of the flexible nature of stasis and how the weapons don't need a specific route to maximise their usage. Going for the bare basis is fine as the build will still play out as intended, but if you want to spec into a high level grenade or melee for example, you can and no disadvantages will come of that. This is something I strongly believe is the right way to build around a not so common build. It's less headaches and more fun in the long run. Now with main bases covered, let's take a look at the mods we are using and how they play within the build. In head we have minor discipline, grenade ammo finder and power rasputin mod. Arm we have fastball, unstoppable grenade launcher, hammer of the war mind and sect of insight mod. Chest we have minor intellect, concussive dampener times 2 and burning cells mod. Boots we have discipline, absolution, grenade launcher scavenger and war mind decree mod. And cloak we have breach and clear and global reach mod. Now as you can tell with how the build is designed and placed, it's a handful for the majority of memories you get yourself into. 
Not only are you dealing with the three different types of grenade launchers at once, but you also have to worry about the ammo economy, the reload phases, the not getting yourself blown up from close objects, etc. Yeah, it can get very chaotic for how much you need to pay attention, basically. But at the same time, it can be very pleasant and fun to mess around with, with little to no negatives coming through to you. All this is going to vary on the type of content you play, type of enemies you face, and how much things are attacking you non-stop. Nobody said playing with free grenade launchers would be easy, but here we are, might as well enjoy the ride. So what exactly is the pros to playing with a build like this? Well for starters, Breach and Clear is a thing and that provides the user a 30% debuff on ultra enemies for a few seconds. As we have free grenade launchers in hand, we can pretty much guarantee that 30% debuff for a very long time, which against bosses on our own or with a team is a big helping hand. We also have the ability to create war myself, which offers us the ability to customise them to our own liking. I went with an easy to create AoE damage build that will enhance my damage by an extra 10% and pretty much wipe out or stun all enemies within the Nicity. And this can be drastically adapted to whatever scenario you are in. And one of the most important parts of the build that I forgot to mention is the Aeon Swift and Fighting Line combo that allow you to have high amounts of primary, special and heavy ammo on demand, like a walking ammo crate. I can also give teammates a weapon damage boost if they don't have Aeons on either. One of the key issues with a build like this is running out of ammo easily and stacking scavenger or ammo finder mods do help, but not all the time. Luckily, Aeon Swift have been updated and are now 100% more better than they've ever been before for all users. With the power of Fighting Lion and this Sinjir perk and Aeon Swift, we can pretty much become a true force of destruction. And with a build like this, you may even be able to take this onto mass level content if you know what you're doing. Of course, I only recommend that with friends and not on your own, as although the build is a powerhouse, it still fails in one key area, and that is ammo in end game. Yes, you have the ability to produce ammo on the fly, but any content that has matched game on, for example, that doesn't match with what you got, will become a pain even when you're using the fighting line to help. Any game that requires specific setups or even specific mods is where the build will become slightly faulty as you won't be able to accommodate or even keep up. With a team you'll be fine and using this in Gambit, Nightfall, Empire's Hunt or Override is where the build is most fun in. However, Master Nightfalls, Grandmaster or even some raids is where the build will struggle to succeed where most do fine in. Not everything in game needs to be mastered by all builds which is important for sustaining the fun in playing the game over and over again. And this rings true for the build. It may have qualities to it that make it feel worth using in most high-end endgame content, but at heart, it's just a silly loadout designed to make you feel all powerful and chaotic, like a grenade, just waiting for its time to shine. So if you enjoyed the video, then please do leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny and Titanfall lore content if you dig that type of stuff. Link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all in the next one.